Hello, welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Friday the 13th, no less. So, unlucky for some, but not unlucky for us, I think. Because um, one of the things that I tend to find myself doing is trawling the internet. Sort of, I look through a lot of old um, puzzle exams from years and years ago. And I came across this one, which is from something called a double decathlon. Uh, that Thomas Snyder did back in 2011. So this puzzle is, uh, well, it's eight years old. Um, and um, the reason I wanted to do it is it's a star battle puzzle. And star battle is one of my favorite types of puzzles. Those of you who follow the channel will know it's a, it's a, a definitely a penchant of mine. Um, it's a puzzle with incredibly simple rules, but it can lead to some lovely logic and um, yeah, let me just go over the rules for you now if you're not used to star battle puzzles. This is a two star star battle puzzle. And the way it works is that you need to put stars, two stars, in each region. You can see the regions delineated by the black lines. Uh, two stars in each column and two stars in each row. And there's only one more rule, and that is that a star cannot touch another star even diagonally. So if you had, a, if you figured out that square was a star, you would know immediately that all of those squares surrounding it could not be a star. And that's it. From that, we we should be able to solve the puzzle. Now, if you want to try it, and I really recommend you have a go, um, click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our software where you can, uh, you should see something very similar to what I've got on screen here, and uh, have a go yourselves. And with that, I am going to have a go. Um, now, I have to confess that as I was putting this into the software, I spotted a trick that um, uh, I'm not sure whether I've seen it before. I must have seen something like it before. Um, and I can I can see a way into this puzzle, uh, right at ab initio. Um, but I thought what I might try and do is not, not show you the trick immediately in case there's another way to do it. So I'm going to take a look and see if I can spot anything else first. Um, so I guess the first obvious place to start here would be this little area here. Um, and the, my best tip for star battle puzzles is that in any 2x2 two two area, the maximum number of stars you can have in a 2x2 two two area is 1. And that's because of our diagonal trick. So if we put a star anywhere in this 2x2 two two yellow area here, it's pretty obvious that there can't be another one. It's pretty obvious when you think about it for a moment, but until you do think about it, it's easy to miss. So in this area here, we can say very confidently that that must be one star. There must be one star in the blue area and one star in the purple area. And this sort of thing can lead us to some deductions. So, for example, we can immediately say this square here cannot be a star. If this is a star, we would eliminate the possibility of star from these three cells. And then we would have to put two stars into this area because we know there are two stars in the region. Um, so for a similar reason, slightly more uh, difficult logic, but not terribly more difficult. If we look at this region, now here we haven't got... We can see this would be one two by two region, but this is not a two by two region, obviously. But we could still deduce, for example, that this square and this square couldn't be stars. And the reason is that if I do try and put a star in this square, I'm going to eliminate a star from all three of those squares, and I'd end up having to put two stars into this region, which is impossible. So we can build up little bits of logic like this. Uh, and the next big tip would be to use geometry. So sometimes you get the opportunity, yes, okay, so let, there is something else here. Let's have a look at the top four rows of the grid. Now I think if we study these carefully, we can find four complete regions here that are entirely contained within the first four rows of the grid. Yes, we can. Look at all those. Now we know each of these regions will contain two stars. So we know that within the yellow cells there will be eight stars. And that's exactly how many stars I need for the first four rows of the grid. So that allows us to conclude that there cannot be stars in any of these squares. Because if there are, is a star in any one of these green squares here in the first four rows, 
then I will have more than eight stars in those rows and that's going to break the rules. Now let's see if we can use that. Yes, oh yes, well we can use it a little bit. So now if we look at this region, you can see that we know that we've got to put two stars in it. We can put a maximum of one star in that region and a maximum of one star in this region. So that's it. Now, a little tip again, if you get a two by one region like this, where we know that there is a star in one of these two squares, then we can always conclude there cannot be stars in those two squares. And again, it's fairly obvious once you think about it. Obviously, if you put a star here or a star here, you would eliminate a star from both these squares. But it's good practice to get into just um, marking these squares off. Now, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can spot us something without using the trick. And there's nothing obvious, so maybe the idea is that you do have to use the trick. <laughs> um, so let me show you. The first thing I spotted when I looked at this puzzle is these R regions going around the edge. Now we can't use the 2x2 two two trick on any of these R regions, they're too big. But we can conclude something quite interesting. Um, something QI, <laughs> um, if you watch the British TV show. Um, now have a think about these regions if you can't see it immediately. And the trick I think we have to realise is that these sort of map, column 1, row 1, whatever column that's going to be, column 12 I guess, and row 12 of the grid, in the sense that we know that the stars in those columns and rows must be contained in the R-shaped regions. And we can see that by just by, let's imagine that we looked at this R region and we found that the two stars were in those positions. Let's just imagine that. What would that mean? Well, it has a profound impact on this R, or sort of reversed R over here, because it would force the stars to be in those squares in this R. Now, in turn, of course, that forces the stars to be here, and that would force the stars to be there. And, ha and if we sort of play around with this, it's not hard to see that however we arrange, obviously if we do it like that, we'd get the same effect. And if we have just one R in a region like this, then we'd have, we always have to have one star like this. Now this is going to be quite important, I'm sure. Um, the other thing we might just, well, I'm just wondering about the very corner square and whether we can say anything confidently about the corner square. Can the corner square ever be a star in one of these R regions? Let's just think about that for a second. Let's imagine that that was the configuration. You could see that would force two stars here, two stars here, and that would break. So I don't think you can have a star in the corner, but that's 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 a bit of logic beyond really what I want to talk about. So if we know that the stars in row one must be contained, both must be contained in these yellow squares, we know there's no star here. We know there's no star here. We know there's no star here. And we know there's no star there. And that might allow us to make more progress. Let's have a stare at this now. Yes, it does. So this region at the top is is very, very restrained now. Where can we put the stars in this region? Well, clearly that can't be a star. There must be a star in one of those squares and there must be a star in one of these two squares. Now, once we've got that, this can't be a star. So we get our first star into the grid. And we know these two can't be a star because they're adjacent to a one by two region that must contain a star. Um, over on this side, look, we know we know there's a star in one of those two squares, so that's not a star, and there's a star in one of those two squares, so that's not a star, and that's not a star. And this is quite nice, isn't it? Because now we've locked two stars into this column. So there can't be stars in any of those squares.
Ah, and here's a nice bit of logic. It's not possible for there to be two stars in this run of three here, because if there are two stars here, there will be three stars in the row, because we've already placed a star here. So there is a, a maximum of one star in this region, and that means there is a, a minimum of one star in this region. And therefore, this square cannot be a star, because if it is, it rules out a star from all three of those positions. And that looks good, doesn't it? Because now, once this is a star, not only can we rule off these, but we've got two stars now in row two of the grid. So now, in this region, there are only two open places that could possibly be the stars we need. And we're going to be able to isolate this as a star as well and put in our green cells around the edge and mark off those ones now in this R region at the top in the top left this must be the, a star and there must be a star in one of those two squares now we uh, we've actually done the logic on the corner already I don't think there can be a star in the corner um, But given we know there cannot be two stars in these three yellow squares here, because that will mean there's three stars in the row, this must be a star. This must be a star. We've not put a star in this region yet. That must be a star. Therefore, this isn't a star. This is a star. This isn't a star. This is a star. Uh, this must be a star. I could have put that one in before failed to see it. That means we've done the stars for this column. Ah! No, I think I did do that right. Thought for a moment I've misclicked. Um, there can't be two stars in this region or it'll break the column, so this must be a star. And you can see here, there can't be two stars here, so that there must be a star in one of these three positions. Don't know which one, but I know that this can't possibly be a star, which we, we'd sort of worked out already. Um, ditto here, this can't be a star. There must be a star in one of those positions. This can't be a star. There must be one a star in one of these three positions. This can't be a star. Therefore, this is a star. Now, there must be a star in one of those two squares to complete the second star in this region, so this isn't a star. Oh, and here's some more nice logic look. If we look at this row and this row, you can see that we're going to have to place the second star. There must be a star in one of those four squares, and there must be a star in one of these five squares, because we know each of these rows needs two stars. Now, if there's a star here, that's one, and a star here, that's two. There can't be any more stars in this shape. So let's remove or make all of those cells green. In this column, there are actually only two open cells that could be stars. So that must be a star. This must be a star, which means this isn't. Now, similarly, that must be a star to complete that co column. It's the only option. And now this must be a star to complete this column. So again, it's the only option. Now if we look at this region, we've already got two stars in it, so none of those can be a star. And I think we're finishing off now. That's got to be a star. No stars here. No stars here as a result of that. Um, there must be a star in one of these three positions for our second star in this shape. So this can't be a star. This must be a star. Uh, this can't be a star, or we'll, we'll rule out a star from all of those positions. Now this can't be a star. And I think we're nearly there. Look, yeah, we've got two stars in this row. So these two squares are ruled out. That one can't be a star. We've got two stars. So those are the stars in the antipenultimate row. Therefore, this is not a star, and I think we're done, yeah. So now uh, we know there are no stars along there. 
There are no stars here, no stars here, and our final star therefore is that one, and that looks like it's working. So that's how to do this lovely puzzle from Thomas Snyder. Very interesting, very interesting design. Um, and I'm not sure if this was deliberate, but you could see that there were some things you could pick off. There was some standard logic that you could, there was some standard logic you could do, but it didn't really do enough. I think you had to get this point around the perimeter of the grid in order to crack the puzzle. Um, and it sort of gently hinted hinted at it with the, with the more normal logic. So do let me know if you enjoyed it, how you got on with it, whether you flew through it or whether it was a struggle. Um, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.